So you see, as much as we've had a brain drain in Africa and made Africa, we will take it back one day. So we're going to have everything, not just healthcare professionals, but also people who look after our security and make sure we're safe. So ladies and gentlemen, with no much more talking, I give you Sir Alan Smith. and uh, the crew last year and uh, awareness cancer awareness is something that we should not take lightly and sometimes we take things so lightly that we actually leave it till it's too late and uh, as I stand here I started going for, uh, for prostate test since I turned 40 that's a couple of years ago not too long ago Which will not be laugh. Some people know me better than I know myself. Anyway, so, especially with men, we don't go to the hospital. Ah, they left so, we'll do it later, till we are close to death. Men in this room, please go for prostate cancer test. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I will not waste your time to introduce the first speaker. But speakers, please be advised that time is of the essence, and, uh, make your talk not too long. Before going any further, right there where the first speaker, um, oh no, the lady in, I don't know, strength call her than this if. Red? Mustard? Mustard. Uh, waiting. Uh, Pink, uh, okay. Anyway, on that table, ladies and gentlemen, we have um, t-shirts for sale. And uh, they cost 15 pounds for the t-shirt and you get one of the bags free. And if you only want the bag, there's a kind of tote bag there, it's only a fiver, please help this world the cause. It's just there so that we can promote the business and send some money to those who really need it. And uh, in your envelopes, in, in the little um, bags that they've given to you, we have some envelopes there. And if you look in it, there we have, if you can put some money in there, we'll come to that later, but I just want to talk to you about that. We, we can uh, either put a check, we don't ask a check, but anyway, if you have one, we still accept. And money as in physical cash, or if you don't have money, there is a bank um, um, account number there that you can do later. Please support us, because to do this work, it entails money. To rent the hall, to do the printing, it all entails money. On that note, I'm going to call on the first speaker. And uh, she's been in the business for a very long time. Trust me, long time I've not actually stood on a lectern since I was going to school. That's 10 years ago. And uh, this particular lady, is a very clever lady. She's gone to school. She she I never call this thing. BSc honors, MSc certificate. She's been a health, a health professional for 29 years. Ladies and gentlemen, she's held both clinical and uh, management positions in the UK and in West Africa. She's interested in maintaining the health of the disadvantaged populations and the pursuit of lifestyle, good lifestyle for all. Ladies and gentlemen, she can talk. We
Health wise, yes. <laughs> you need a microphone? Can I put this? I think I do need one actually. Because my voice is not. Uh... You took up from me. Yeah, with the mustard and pink. Now I see. Thank you everybody for coming today and obviously we're starting a bit late. Thank you Isati for inviting me again, although, you know, it's uh, John Pamain to win and John is between me and you. <laughs> and it's, it's really good to be here. I'm glad she has persevered and is doing it again for the second time. And hopefully we'll be here again next year, next year, God willing. Okay. So, what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to keep it um, quick. <laughs> Obviously, we've been given a uh, warning about uh, keeping to time. I'm going to be talking about how to maintain a healthy lifestyle, all right? Now, of course, there are people who are going to come and they'll talk quite a bit about cancer and all the rest of it. I'm just going to talk about how it is that we can keep ourselves healthy, because I think that we all have a responsibility to make sure um, that we're on the right path and that we eat the right things and we do everything we can to keep healthy. I've got a presentation, but before we get to it, I wanted to talk to everybody about what your idea is of being healthy. So I got somebody at work. <laughs> Uh, to draw me this tree, because I'm not an artist, I try, but I'm not one, to draw me this tree and I want um, each of you or a group of you to tell me something that means health to you. Okay? Alright? Is that good? Or I, I want it to be interactive. Yep. I don't want to stand here and just be talking to people. Because one thing about me is that I'm a little on the rebellious side. If somebody says to me, don't eat sausages, I mean, there was a time when there was something in the news and they said, don't eat sausages. And that day I went into the supermarket and I bought two sausages and ate them. So I don't like people <laughs> preaching at me and I don't like people telling me what to do and what not to do. So I want you to come forward or to sit there and sort of say, this is what health means to me and I hope that I can... Where's Tish? Tish, come and help me, right? Thank you, darling. And I hope that, um, you know, we can put it down and sort of bring forward our ideas of what health means. Okay. Over to you, Nima. <laughs> Just one word. Well-being. Well-being. Which kind of well-being? Do you mean like... Um, well well, or hairstyle? Is your, having a nice hairstyle mean something? Yeah, does it mean your hair? Yeah. Nice hairstyle, please, Tish. You see, I'm, I'm you to today. You can send me. You like some. Thank you. Nice hairstyle. Anybody else? I said, yeah. I beg your pardon. Did somebody say food? Food? Yeah. yeah. Food, what sort of food are we talking about? McDonald's or African or Bajan? <laughs> Cups look big. Fruit and veg. Now, don't pretend you eat fruit and veg when you know you go home and eat five plates of curry with, I don't know. This gentleman here, he's got a glint in his eye. <laughs> what does health mean to you, sir? Happiness, which in what context? Um, it's different for each people. Okay. So, um, whatever, whichever way you want to take it. Yeah. Um, for you in particular, what is happiness? Everything. Everything? Yeah. Okay. Happiness. Yeah, health is wealth. Health is wealth. Okay. So. Does being healthy mean having money in your pocket? No. Okay. You're able to earn a living. Okay, freedom, freedom. I like being wealthy. <laughs> I like to have money in my pocket. Does health mean anything to anybody here? 
Psychological well-being, super, yes. Psychological well-being, Tish. Yes, ma'am. Being well, being well. Does being well mean getting up? And So health means being well. One thing that health, mean, health means to me is being able to speak to my son. I'll say no more on that one. On a daily basis. Without having a text back, mom, don't call me and don't send me messages. I'm actually at work. <laughs> so uh, that's health for me. Yes, sir. Fitness, yes, fitness. Mm -hmm. In the absence of disease. Absence of disease, yeah, certainly. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Physically active. Do you go running? Sometimes. Fantastic. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Survival. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sounds very similar to what um, Fatu was saying, yeah. Okay, yes sir. Health is existence. Health is existence. Just be. Yes. Existence, Tish. Existence. Existing. Yeah, that is true. Funny, I saw um, a little clip the other day and somebody was being told that they had brain cancer. And so he said to the doctor, can you just take the brain out? And the doctor said, no, we can't take your brain out because if we were to take your brain out, you wouldn't be able to do anything. And he said, well, half of the people in America vote for Trump. They've got no brains. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Whoops. boom. Don't tell anybody I said that, because that's it. I'll never go to America again. Boom. Right, what does health mean for anybody here? I said that. What does health mean for you? Being able to do this. Yes. Sharing knowledge. True. Fantastic. She would say that. <laughs> Do you want to say anything, man? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Fantastic. That's a textbook answer. Yeah. Mr. Roy Macaulay, what does health mean for you, sir? Health means being able to provide and also to serve. True. Wow, that's very, very um, switched on people here. <laughs> <laughs> the environment, yes. What do you mean by the environment? That's very, very, very true. There are other aspects of the environment also, the geographical environment. If you live in a place where um, sanitation is a problem, okay, um, that too can be problematic because it goes into the food chain, you eat what is grown and, you know, and so on and so forth, and that can um, hamper your health. All right. Now, if anybody's got anything pressing that they want to add that we haven't talked about, can we just have a show of hand? Yes, sir. For me, health is actually security to be able to provide and care for the people that you care about. Yes. 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 <laughs> I can see. That's a typical man's answer, do you know what I mean? providing for your family. I'm not saying women don't provide, of course we do, but you know, I can see where that is coming from. So, we have quite a number of health 
giving um, examples here, sharing knowledge, health is wealth, the environment, fitness, existence, security, looking after family, somebody said cassava leaves, with granite soup. <laughs> Happiness, nice hairstyle, taking care of your, yourself, uh, looking good, being able to talk to your family, living in a decent environment, uh, not being bullied at work, being looked after, being able to get up out of bed to see to your day-to-day -day activities. All of those things entail health, all right? So that's great. I mean, I'm going to go now, on now to the presentation and we'll just talk through some of the things that I put down which um, I think would be life health enhancing and life giving. All right, thank you very much, my beautiful assistant. <laughs> right, so, oh gosh, I didn't know it was right up there. There we are. In pursuit of health. Obviously, the environments in which we were born, the environment in which we live and work really matter for health. And quite a number of people have already mentioned, mentioned that. A good education, a decent job if you can have it, a suitable roof over your head, friendships, networks, providing for family. These are all ingredients for a healthy life. And we recognize all of these different aspects of living life in a healthy way across the world. But this um, quotation actually comes from Public Health England. All right, and of course the WH WHO who, are, uh, who have an umbrella overview, if you like, of health across our world say that health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Okay, and I think we all agreed on that one. Slide two, please. So, we're thinking about health. Okay, some people here have already mentioned fitness, exercise. I'm a person in the last couple of years, I've, well, maybe the last four years, I've um, moved into being as fit as I possibly can. The thing is, uh, somebody said that they didn't want to die. The thing is, I think I'm afraid of dying myself, <laughs> quite honestly. And I was looking at ways of really making sure that I could extend my lifespan for as long as is possible. And when I researched it, because I spent like most of my life reading health stuff, when I researched it a bit, one of the things that... Um, I came across was that exercise really helps you to um, be fitter and stronger and I wanted to be fit and strong, I wanted to be in a position that if anything went wrong with my cells, you know how can cancer comes around and you know, the cells are dividing and one day one goes crazy and it starts multiplying in a way that it shouldn't be doing. And I was thinking, how can I stop all this, it's, you know, just in my own mind. So I pay a lot of attention to exercise, I run every other day, I go do lots of walking. If you're a person who engages with me on social media, you see all my stuff out there. So pay attention to your body. This is really important to me. I know some of you who are clinicians and you've been out there for a while and, and looking after people. One of the first things that you notice in a person when they come in front of you, I'm sure you've seen that, is what's wrong with them. <laughs> you look at them and you think, oh, when I saw them on Thursday, they didn't look this way. There's a number of things wrong with them or something they've got gotten worse or their symptoms are exacerbating, that sort of thing. You're trained to do that. You're trained to see what's going wrong. I suppose in some ways, because we have our own bodies, we can do likewise to ourselves. We can pay attention to what's wrong with us, make sure that um, we understand what's going on in our bodies, don't ignore things that, men do that, don't they? Somebody said that, men do that, they, you know, there's something going on and they just pretend it's not there, they don't go to the doctors. And This is very much um, research proven that men don't go to the doctors. They don't want to know. <laughs> so 
even though they might see it, they might see that they're coughing a bit more or have a little bit of a wheeze, that sort of thing. Um, so don't ignore unusual signs, constant headaches, lumps and bumps in places where they shouldn't be and they continue to be. Manage your weight, that's incredibly important. Um, I, I just want to say a bit more because, you know, like I, I come from a community where people have, you know, people are a little big. Just because you are doesn't mean to say that you're unhealthy. And if you're slim, it doesn't mean to say that you are healthy. So you've got to keep an eye on things like that. So the real um, aspects of health that make you healthy or non-healthy are the signs and symptoms that you have when you go to doctors. If you do a, a blood pressure check, that blood pressure is normal, you know. Those are the real things that can tell, or blood test. If you do a blood test, when the values come through and they read the blood test, those are the things that tell you whether a person is healthy or not. It's not about being fat and it's not about being slim. So, manage your weight, okay? Um, cancer Research UK tells us that uh, obesity causes cancer. Cut back. Somebody, a lady over there said that um, cut back on your salt and sugar intake, eat food in moderation, eat smaller portions, add more fruit and veg to your diet. We all know what we should do, but I think actually doing it is another thing altogether. And you need to sort of pay attention to what's going on. We eat a lot of white rice, for example, in our populations, in, in Australia, in Australian populations, I don't know about. What, what is your uh, carbohydrate of choice in, in your, where you come from? Well, it's pasta. Pasta? Oh, I love pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, we do like pasta as well. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's moderation in what you eat, and you can eat small amounts of food and eat, add more vegetables to it, to it, and, you know, keep, keep an open mind on these things. Um, you don't have to stick with what you know, experiment a little bit with your food. If you smoke, drink alcohol, or you take drugs, and I mean illegal drugs, consider seeking help to stop because obviously those are not going to help you if you're seeking a healthy uh, lifestyle pathway. Um, they will have a serious effect on your health, in fact. Avoid unprotected sex. Um, I know obviously nobody here has sex. But um, if you do, <laughs> why would you? <laughs> if you are joking, that is a joke. Of course. <laughs> if you do, and you're not married to the person, hopefully you are. Wear a condom. <laughs> um, sexually transmitted infection and known to be linked to uh, a number, a number of cancer. <laughs> Numbers, a number of cancers. Protecting yourself lowers your risks. It doesn't take away the risk completely, but it lowers it. All right. And in fact, none of these healthy uh, living things that we do completely eliminates your risk of getting cancer. Do you know what I mean? It just reduces it. That's what it does. It means that you take um, you take control of things that you can actually take control of, like what you eat, you know, how you go about your life, and so on and so forth. You take control, you do something to ensure that you have um, a healthy uh, lifestyle. So, one of the other things that we have to talk about is screening appointments. We're in the BAME communities. We're known for our low uptake of screening appointments, which means that people just don't go for their breast screening and so on. I mean, I'm a little guilty of that. I had to be sedulated twice before I went to my second one. But I did go eventually. But this is very important that people take up um, screening appointments and they follow through. All right, exercise regularly. I've already said a bit about that. Next one, thank you. Okay, so sometimes people feel that they have to go and pay very expensive gym memberships at some club to get fit or get a personal trainer. If you're interested in getting fit and making sure that you live a healthy lifestyle, you don't have to do any of that. Do a little bit of research in your area. I'm sure you'll find a group of people who are already out there 
they're doing some exercise, even if you have young children, because I get that as, a, as an excuse sometimes for people, oh, I can't go because I've got to take the kids to school or whatever it is that you do with children these days. I hope you're not locking them in the back of the car and forgetting about them. But um, you know, do something. If, if the kids have gone to school, you can spend even 30 minutes just walking around your area. You know, there's always something that you can do with local mums if you're an older gentleman. Um, or a middle-aged gentleman, you can find something to do with people who are like you. Busy lifestyles mean, can sometimes mean um, that you're not looking after your health and if you want to look after your health, if you want to um, embark on a healthy lifestyle path where you have to um, make those decisions that give you the time to do what it is that you need to do. But you've got to be interested in it. There's loads of resources, social media, follow people. I mean, I spend tons of time just looking through YouTube and other places, finding out about what the latest interests are in so far as healthy lifestyles are concerned um, and what different groups of people do. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about it afterwards if anybody wants to talk to me uh, later on. I'm very conscious of the time. Um, don't pay attention to fad things like New Year resolutions, that's just stupid. <laughs> if you want to do anything, get on and do it. Don't wait for the 1st of January, because um, by the end of January you'd have forgotten about it, trust me. Um, that's it. Find people who are interested in the things that you're interested in. If you don't have a lot of money, use the local park. I used to run in the school next door to me, you know, a little bit out of the way, I just waited for them to go into their classrooms, went in there, ran up and down, came out again. <laughs> you know, do that sort of thing. Right, okay. The other thing that uh, somebody actually had mentioned about mental health, and it's something that we very, very quietly tuck away in a corner, and we don't talk about it. We don't talk about our mental health issues, we don't talk about the struggles that we have, um, you know, at various stages in our lives, whether we are young mothers, whether we've got um, teenage children. When I had my, when my son was teenage, if I had a little bit of help at that time, it would have been good for me because it was a bit of a roller coaster, I have to say. Uh, we don't, oh, do you mind? Who was that? Have they moved it on? And they move it back. <laughs> Is that a cue? Right, so, so really and truly, we don't talk about mental health. I want each one of us here to really think about it properly. Looking after your physical health is the same as looking after your mental health. Okay? Both aspects of health are very, very important to the person that you are and the person that you are going to become. All right, so you can have insurance, you can have the house, you can have the husband, you can have the no husband, you can have the boyfriend, you can have the girlfriend, whatever you want. You can have a car, but if your mental health is not working properly or you're not satisfied or you're depressed or there are issues going on in your life that you need to sort out for one reason or another, none of those things will work. None of those things will work. Your communication will be hampered, your life will be, you know, really um, at a disadvantage. Being active does help a person's mental health. I have to say, a friend of mine, when I was away, um, at, you know, at home working, um, she was very depressed for about six months, and the thing that really picked her up was when she started to, to exercise, it actually physically helps you lift your mood um, out of the place that it is and brings it to someplace else, which is better for you all round. Volunteering, do some volunteering so that you move your mind away from your issues. As big as they are, over time, they will be solved one way or another. Um, so if you do a little bit of volunteering, all of this sounds as though you've got to put yourself out there. And really, you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to be part of the community. Um, you've got to do things to encourage. You remember what Public Health England said right at the beginning, the um, definition, that is part of you know, a healthy lifestyle, is part of health. 
um, being part of the community and participating in whatever way that you can. Live in the moment, enjoy life. There's no point. I mean, I used to worry. I used to lie there at home and just worry about... Because I've seen, like, thousands of people die. I'm not joking. I literally have seen lots and lots of people die. And I always used to worry. I'll say this quick before I finish as time. I'm just about, I'm just about running over my time. I used to sit there and think, you know, I see people move from one state, being alive, and then dying. I just think to myself, well, what happens after that, though? Because obviously they die. I'm standing there and I'm thinking, what's going on? You know, I mean, what happens to them afterwards? You know, because I'm not that big on religion. So, um, it, so this is worrying me, and I'm just thinking, live in the moment, enjoy life. There's no point in you worrying about something that you have no control over whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? So that's part of making yourself, preparing yourself for whatever it is that's coming. Just live in the moment and enjoy your life. All right? Look after yourself. Okay? We spend, especially us women, we spend all our lives looking after our children, husbands, and you know, all the rest of it. There comes a time when you have to make sure that you look after yourself and that you do what it is that you have to do to prolong your life and be healthy. Thank you. Hello. Auntie, Sarah. Sorry. Thank you. Yes. Live and let die. Live and let die. A round of applause for that speaker. Our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, is actually academically balanced. She is a socialite. She has a BSc honors degree and a specialist and her, a specialist in head and neck cancer. She's a nurse, a cancer nurse, definitely. Um, uh, assessment nurse, practitioner, a mentor, she's got it, you name it. She's the Secretary of Friends of Diabetes and a UK ambassador for female in Sierra Leone. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming a mother of four, a beautiful lady, talking about cervical cancer, Nima. Thank you, Mrs. Smith, for that introduction. Thank you. And thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Esata, for putting me behind the mic today. Away from my